Да, отлично. Лев Драгунов. Комп... Лев Драгунов, uh, Juno Company. Uh... Всем привет. Hello, everyone. Пока нет презентации, давайте... Well, we do not have the presentation. Uh, let's proceed without it. Спасибо. Thank you very much. My name is Лев. I'm here from Juno Company. I represent Juno Company, and I'll tell you how we packaged Postgres in Docker, and what was the experience, and what we learned from that Juno Red Felling startup. Uh, something close to the company is the Uber, uh, that does the taxi services in New York. Currently. We have 10,000 of drives per day, and through Postgres it's being managed in different types. We have RDS instance. We have a separate uh, machine for the analysis, and for some of the applications, we use Docker uh, Postgres. So for us to learn, just for me to understand who's been working with Docker, who's using it in production, that's great. And Postgres and Docker in production, who has that? Why are you here? Everything's fine, I think. So this is not my presentation yet, okay. I see that many of you have not used that yet. So why do we need to dock a Postgres? Why do we need to do that? One of the main ideas to use the docker is to get off from the... We have the containers there, which are independent, so we need to gain some independency. Uh, there is a computer server in vacuum where you can load any container from, everything's fine. But when it's... We get some active developers. Some of the companies decided to use their own production flow and how they put the data into Pro uh, based on Docker's. One of the use cases on how to use Postgres and docking it is to be similar to the rest of infrastructure. We have more than uh, microservice and with this we use the Docker. And the other thing is that you don't need to use the expensive admi ad admins. We still do not have the presentation, unfortunately. Is anyone working on it or what's going on? And now I'm going to dance here and show you the Docker file. Let's start with a standard container. When, when we test the Docker, we have this. So we usually start with standard container where organization of the Docker is being provided at the Docker Hub. and the Docker Hub, we have Postgres container. And, and it's quite pretty. Um, so the standard view, I can show you two links above with the description of the container and the description of the Docker file. You need to look through what's in the container and which goes to Pro. What can, what the standard container consists of after the startup initiates the database. Uh, on default, it creates the database and uh, creates the user so that you can attach to the database and the container, uh, the standard container, which some people forget about it. It starts up the files in the specific directory. If it is a SQL, SQL gets GZ, and if you do the CI and you have many tests, integrated tests where you need to check your service being in operation, how they communicate to the database, this is the perfect mechanism for you to get some instance with the testing data. You do not need to write 
anything additionally. This is one of the main applications of a standard container, in my opinion. Don't forget about such a great feature. And how does the standard start up? It looks like we have some docker run command. We give the uh, docker name and we get the volumes and the docker operates in that certain way. It generates the data in itself, in itself and keeps the docker. So the variant that gives us the opportunity to exchange the files to get the files from it or give it back from the directory. This is the attachment of additional external uh, vo volumes to the hosts. For instance, the volume of, of uh, the Postgres data, if you're writing it and you want to uh, to take it to Postgres or, to, and, or after the restart of the container to find this data, you need to take it out from the container, from inside of the container. The second part is how to initiate the scripts to the Docker into points. Uh, this is a long directory, and you can find the scripts there. Then next variant con configuration, you can find standard container, which it takes from uh, the uh, passwords for the default user, for instance. So no comments, uh, it has to be given away, otherwise you will have no connection. Uh, and D is just a daemon, and uh, in the end it's called Postgres, the instance that we are starting. And the latest is the uh, tagging scheme, which repeats the version of Postgres. Uh, there is 11, 10, 9.5, 9.6, and so on. And one more interesting methods of uh, using of the Docker. I never thought about it actually, but if you use Dockers and Postgres and Docker, and there's nothing in the system except for the Docker, then you can use SQL and some console utilities to take from container as well. In this case, this line uh, helps you to start the PSQL. Uh, to having this only in a container. In, in, in case the war, I know that there is a solution. So standard container, what's so good about it? It's standard. You do not maintain it, you do not make up uh, the packaging, Postgres, you simply use something when you have internet access. It's very flexible and for any ACI you can, be, you can set it up. And if you take all the data and all the configurations of your own configurations, you can use as well the Postgres. What, what, what are the disadvantages? It takes a long time for the startup. Why do we need the containers in Juno? What did we want to do with Postgres containers in Juno? In our system, we have Postgres as as the book uh, with some database where we do not write, but where we keep the data that people are asking for. And we have microservices on the Postgres where we keep uh, the procedures. And my microsafe server SQL. So we wanted to take into account and versify that and to be compatible to the rest of the system. Thus, when we have lots of data, we face the problem the container starts up uh, slowly and uh, initiating takes time. And zip, DDL, um, building the index, it takes a lot of time uh, during the first startup. And then uh, for our vers versification, it does not help us because we take on the binary signals from here and with Postgres, um, we wanted to change the situation. And one of the problems that we need to take into account, so this is a real post from the chat, PSQL chat and Telegram. Those who are not in that group yet, please uh, add 
to this group. There are many interesting things. After I gave the report, then we had the problem that the data has been deleted. What happened? The container uh, switched off from the Docker Composer. This is one of the utilities that allows you to orchestrate many containers at the same time. And it happened that one of the external one uh, in two containers that mixed uh, the data. And as far as I remember, no, nobody wanted to, uh, to restore that data after that happened. So in my opinion, if uh, you have very expensive data and if you what is important for you, what you actively is writing in Postgres, and to read this data afterwards, and you don't have set up architecture with some writing of 500 Postgres at one and the same time, so be very careful on using uh, the volume to the Postgres, to the data, Postgres data, because in 2019, I can tell you that the DOCA is not uh, the most stable solution. In my department for the de DOCA demo and shutter, we happens about like once in half a year. So here we use some abstraction level, and on the top of API, the uh, files that's been written uh, Postgres, storaging the files, the most important thing uh, that you need to do in uh, to have a database when you're writing something. So this is one of the sources for the arrows, because this is one of the abstractions. Be very careful with that. But uh, if and, okay, and one more thing in the Docker, if you need to receive some advantages, if you need to get some advantages, if you're in the cloud and the structure, you need to look up for RDS and analogs. Those clouds do have those databases on purpose because it's safer and more reliable, and this is the correct way to do it. If you're not in the cloud, then do the standalone installation and all important data to be taken care of by Postgres without visualization. If you need something uh, to be provided and embedded in the system, then look at the chief and Ansible and Puffet. But if you want to have your own Docker, how do we set it up? What do we want from our Docker? What did we want? Verification, uh, quick startup, and uh, less weight uh, because it takes time to uh, to be uh, employed or deployed to different machines. So we had wrote our, our own Docker file, so I want to say a few words about its structure. So first thing we take, uh, it's based on some sort of uh, instance. So if your Docker file is written by you and it will keep the data, please try to organize the levels of the instance in such a way that the code of Postgres, PostGIS, and all the extensions is separate and the data is separate. The first of all, it allows you to do some um, build of uh, repetitiveness and then when you will deploy it in the production, the Docker uh, goes by the levels or layers. The Postgres layer, I don't think you upgrade the Postgres uh, version um, uh, quite often. So basically you will just uh, need to add more data and it will be a fast deployment. Postgist version that we had, this is Bumble, Postgres Bumble, and then it's taken to the stack of Docker files uh, that are being used, and then we prepare the database for the Postgres for its, uh, for its use. With the Docker CE, we have multi-stage build uh, feature, and how we lived before, if each line of the Docker this is the layer which is being uh, uh, rolled. Uh, before we do that, the layers get on the layer, starting from Docker CE version, uh, which is two years old, 
and then multi-stage build like it is here the stage that we call builder where we keep all the dirty work and not think about it how much layers are there all the layers will be in CI machine whenever you are building it up and in the second stage again do the same thing take the raw light image which was initially in postgres and just roll over pg data on it and so we have one layer of uh, inputs which uh, will not be rolled over in the next in in following instances you already have them on service and then the next layer with data you just uh, place uh, pg data on your servers and in general, well, it flew in our case and it worked and was up and running very fine. What happens in the file? How do we prepare our database? Here we need to remember that uh, creation of a Docker uh, and execution of a Docker file and operation stage uh, means different stages. In a standard thing, in a standard session, in the end of the Docker file, there is entry point directive, how to start it up. And uh, at the moment of the Docker file, Postgres is not working. So if we uh, are populated with data, we need to uh, bounce it by PGTL start. Then we have to execute different scripts. And uh, it's also painful. You should use error stock uh, because in SQL it swallows all errors easily. So you. You can uh, select for one month the whole cont cont container which is not workable and uh, until production. I didn't do it, but one uh, friend of mine, she did it. Well, what else can we can be done? Uh, we c it's good to leave some stamps to uh, store the time of uh, uh, placement into the base. I did it here in a separate table because uh, the Docker is not a very stable system. Our deploy system updated three uh, machines, but uh, the fourth one was not updated, and uh, we thought why we had these errors of uh, geometry mismatch. Geometry couldn't be matched until we check it manually. So please leave some marks. It would be very useful. Then, by said on other tools, you should um, debug Docker Compose. I put stake time out here, but we have another hack. Still, uh, our database is only for reading. We place shared booth buffers in the volume, in the critical volume of the table where we are asking whether it's full in the memory or not. And if full, then uh, it is uh, readable. Uh, database and then the most magic of Postgres after we did everything we executed all scripts everything's okay we ask Postgres to service itself vacuum full freeze analyze all this thing starts up all internal uh, Postgres handlers uh, skips all non-used tuples, uh, everything which we deleted, all this dirt, compresses the database uh, finally. And after this wonderful phrase, our we have the minimum uh, amount on the disk. We can uh, uh, dump Postgres. We can uh, assemble the image layer and send it to the general Docker hub to make it work there. That was stop on GTKL. On that, that was all from my part. The image is created. We are operating it. It's been three years for our startup, and uh, we really like this job. And uh, what I wanted to tell you, Postgres works in Docker. And as a system software, PG does not use any super features, super functions which would uh, not uh, allow it to work in virtualization. It uses um, system calls, calls the system up through the C group. There's no problem with that. So 
basically it fits very well into the container. Standard image of Postgres is a very powerful thing. I recommend to read the description and uh, learn how to fine-tune and set up all parameters. The modern CI-CD systems, when uh, tests are going on, if you need to make some integration tests by uh, putting up the half of uh, your production machine and uh, by uh, r running some test data, this standard image is absolutely a perfect thing and very convenient. But you have always to remember that if you want to write in it, you should replace volume with an external entity. Then it works, but it's another iteration. And if in case of any any faults, unfortunately, there could be some, you could um, uh, significantly damage your data which were there. But it wouldn't mean that you do it and uh, everything would break at once. It would break at some, in some time, after some time, when you will not expect it. But again, it's my personal opinion. I'm not telling you that it's an absolutely correct opinion. And, uh, well, that was all. Now, thank you, Lev. I think we have about five minutes for questions and answers, and then we will have a coffee break at half past four. Thank you very much. Uh, on what axis do you base your Docker containers in Postgres? Currently, uh, well, basically, it's a good question. I uh, tried to write it for IPy, but now historically we have it on Ubuntu. Thank you. And uh, well, your official uh, image war is on Alpine. Yes, Alpine, it's a real fire. It's small. It was written by professionals. It's really cool. Thank you for your presentation. From the point of view of production and costs, and uh, uh, when you use Docker or not Postgres, what happens there? In production, of course, tests doesn't is not interesting. Production is interesting. Uh, the testing now it's more important. Do you really think so? So tell business about it. That production is bullshit and tests is the main thing. Well, I'm ready to discuss it with you in uh, the lobbies, but the main idea is that if on your host you have only one container running, well, there shouldn't be any problems. It's a Linux-based C group. If, uh, it's not set up. There's no setup for its dumping. It will work with a full swing of a host. So you didn't uh, uh, test it, did you? We tested that there is no dramatic drop in production, in performance. We didn't, uh, what we didn't do is, uh, well, I didn't quite get you. Do you have any limits of load of uh, CPU disks? Or you don't care about anything? I just want, would like to rephrase your question. Have you seen any limits, any any deadlocks, and you, that you should test something? When you, we are stuck with CPU, we will bring only one carriage. You do not, you 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 just don't go from Docker. You just add one more machine. Yes, globally, yes, we tested that when uh, uh, skipping Docker will not give us to ex uh, pr productivity. Uh, from the context, I understood that. You do not use clusters. You have no, comp no no configurations on containers. No, we have read-only containers. These are services of reference books, but they are linked and tied to some other data, which are not located in the database. But this is the point to, from the point of view of the performance. We've been looking at these containers for a long time, but we have some doubts in terms of abstraction. If well, it, if we have read-only data, we just uh, add a new machine, a new drive, we have absolutely no parallelism. There was a question over there, please. 
Thank you for your presentation. It is my topic. I've just uh, set up it just recently, and I'm in, pr in the process. Just a few remarks. Version 18.9 uh, in Docker build has a build kit which uh, works very good with multi layered images, can skip non use layers. It's a build pattern, and you can use it and uh, use very interesting features. And the second comment about volumes and the issues with volumes. The main volumes, most probably, of can be mounted to uh, folders, and there will be less chances to fuck it up. Thank you. Yes, I agree. And uh, starting from the pre previous uh, version, uh, there was a squash comment inserted when you were able to merge layers. But again, I uh, haven't used it yet. We just uh, made it up and running the multi-stage scene, and we are OK with it. Thank you for your presentation. Uh, have you looked only at Docker? Why not LXE, for example? So how, for example, what is the longest uh, living container? What's the longest uptime of one container? I don't know, six months maybe. So not more than six months and then something happens. Yes, then afterwards we want to update it, of course. When, uh, well, it's either data or code, startup is living, is developing, so we need either to bring up a new code or to update the roadmap. You haven't looked at LXE or Docker is better by something? We, ma we can say that maybe we looked at it. When I came to the company, Doctor, do, do, the Docker was already selected, so I can't tell you anything. And why you selected Docker without going further? For instance, PGCT can be used to restore your container. Why you stopped at uh, the Docker level? Well. Uh, Let's say it's beyond the scope of my department. We do not provide the full DevOps. But there were some issues. That's why we had our own pipeline on container rollout. And uh, three years ago, Cybernet was not so very stable. Thank you very much. Let's discuss. And after the coffee break, we will have Fyodor Sigaev again.